So yeah, so pretty much the website, you know, shows all availability for everyone and, you know, goes through, literally just keeps me organized, which has been a blessing. And so that's been amazing, and I'm able to keep one backup lane. So if um, I have a major lane breakdown that would either take me too long or uh, something catches fire and, you know, I can't immediately get it fixed right away, you know, something that has to cool down and then I can fix later, I have a backup lane for, you know, that group. So I always do that, and uh, it's been amazing. But, yeah, like I said, being just me, uh, you can't just call and be like, yeah, what do you got for, you know, two weeks out in advance or even like typically on the day, I barely have availability on me because it's so hard to keep up with it. But uh, usually what I do is right when I open. So, for example, today I opened at two o'clock and uh, I filled up all the lanes that I had running, which I think today was, I believe I had seven, seven running lanes, which on a really good day, it's about eight or nine running lanes. Um, a few of them are having some issues, and uh, those are the ones I can't really fix right now with the state of my finger. So those will be, once my finger's healed up, I can go on and uh, fix those. So yeah, so pretty much I fill up all the lanes first thing. So all the groups, seven groups came in right at two o'clock. And so right at two o'clock, I do this thing where the uh, work phone number for this business is actually a cell phone that I have. So they are able to text me as well. So what I do is I text them and I say, here is your confirmation. This is the time that you have for your lane. Um, if you could, and this is just a, if you're, they're able, send me shoe sizes and names that I can put up on the lane so that everything is actually ready for their arrival. Makes it quicker for them to get checked in and it makes it so much easier on me being just me. And then having all of those groups because before all those groups, the line went all the way out the door. And you know, with it being rainy today, people are standing out in the rain waiting to come in. So it just makes it so much easier on everyone. So all those groups came in. Uh, I think two of them didn't respond to my message about the shoes and the names. So all the groups came in and all I said was, would you like to pay now or do you want to do a game by game and pay at the end? And uh, you know, most of them say game by game and so they do a tab and they go to their lane and uh, they sit down, they try on their shoes and they wait. And I get every two o'clock checked in unless some are running late. Then I go down and I get everyone's attention. I use a megaphone and I go down and I tell them, you know, hello, you know, how's it going everyone? And I go through a spiel. And the spiel usually consists of the rules about the bowling alley because mine doesn't really operate like others with how old the machinery is. Uh, you know, being one person running the place, you know, things like that. So it goes on about the rules, about candle pin bowling, because a lot of what's going on here is this has become a tourist attraction. And so a lot of people have no idea what candle pin bowling is and have never tried it. So that's most of the spiel as well, is just going through, you know, how candle pin bowling works, what it is, and how to play. And so after the spiel, um, it's usually at the end of it, I just go, all right, bowlers, are we ready to bowl? And then usually most of them will end up saying, yeah, you know, and then that's when I say, what was that? Are you guys ready to bowl? And then they all will shout and uh, shout it out really loud. And that's probably my favorite part, you know, everyone getting ready throughout the day. So after I, you, those groups start, they have two hours on the lanes. And uh, this is the reason why the machines, they were not wired in properly, the motors and a lot of other things, but mostly the motors. Um, whatever is up here, it's usually 20 degrees hotter out back of the lanes. Um, I sweat like crazy throughout the day. It's, it's, it's insane. And uh, so that is, uh, it's not good pretty much. So each, each group gets two hours because after two hours, those motors are usually so hot that they need to cool down. Um, they get up in temperature, and uh, several times, if they go past the two-hour mark or anything, the motors get so hot that they actually will melt the belts off of them. And so, um, you know, I make sure that after the two hours, each lane gets 20 to 30 minutes to have, because there's five motors on each lane, to actually cool down. 
And that's just until I can start getting, like, you know, everything rewired, new parts and everything back there. And uh, so a lot of people, you know, they see the group leave and they're like, oh, yeah, we'll take their lane. And it doesn't work like that. First of all, I got to sanitize. I got to do the buttons. I got to do the ball return, the bowling balls in it, degreasing them and then cleaning them. Uh, the tables need to be wiped down. You know, chairs need to be wiped down. The benches all in that one area. There is so much cleaning to do after one group. And so with the cleaning in that time, I usually am able to do the cleaning about the same time as it takes for the motors to cool down. So if a group uses the full two hours and a group after, if there's a group after them, um, I have a 30 minute period to let the, them cool down. I'll go back, test the temperatures, and make sure they're good to go. If I put a group right after another group, it would literally just burn out the motor or melt those belts right off, causing a lot of issues. And so, you know, that's that's what I do. But yeah, a lot of groups like so when I said that all those groups came in at two o'clock today, they all left at four o'clock. You know, some left a little bit early, some left, you know, right at four and uh, but no later than that. So literally it goes from being super crazy. You can't hear a thing. To literally like cricket noise and so they all leave they all turn in their shoes I have you know lots of pairs of shoes probably about 70 to 80 pairs of shoes to clean and sanitize and then all their tables all the buttons you know all that stuff there um, the arcade room needs wiped down there's dishes that need to be done and bathrooms that need to be cleaned like there's just so much and then during that period it always seems that people come in right then and there and they see oh wow there's no one in here you know, there's lanes open. Sweet, we'll get a spot when the website says it's usually reservation. That's awesome. And then there's me who then tries to explain to them, no, I actually don't. Like, these lo these lanes, they're cooling down. They look at me weird because that does sound really weird. And uh, I tell them that I just got rid of over 60, 70, sometimes 80 bowlers and that I'm about to get my next batch in. And most people do not believe me. I've had multiple people that will sit and wait for the groups to come in. And which, of course, there's groups that will come in and they'll see. But then they see me fill up the lanes and they see there's still some open. And so then they'll come up to me and go, well, what about that lane? And then I'll go, I'm really sorry, that lane's not working. And again, they'll look at me weird or they'll get upset with me, you know, anything. Some will storm out. Some will keep arguing with me, you know. Some will then question me like, what do you mean it's broken? What do you mean it's down? Go fix it. Like things like that. And so it really stinks. It does. But so after those four o'clock, I have the 30 minutes. I clean everything. Like I said, all those things I mentioned. And then I get ready. From there, um, reservations are staggered. And so um, what I mean is like the next group is a 4.30. So I have like two groups at 4.30, two groups at 4.45, two groups at 5 o'clock, and it just goes on throughout the day like that. And so um, that gives me time, you know, to clean in between each group again and again and again, and it just keeps on going until I close. And so um, tonight I close at 1. Um, actually closing up a little early tonight. Usually I go right up until 1 and then down here for a couple hours. Um, but unfortunately, I'm in a lot of pain right now with my finger. And I know I have a really, really long day ahead of me tomorrow because it's going to be a Saturday. And we're already fully booked until Wednesday right now. So I am already getting ready for a really crazy day. And I know I just want to try to get as much sleep as possible. And on top of that, I won't be going to bed on Saturday because on Sunday morning we are doing a free community breakfast, my fiancé and I. And so we are going to be up all Saturday night, so all tomorrow night, to be prepping for this breakfast. We have enough food to feed um, 900 to 1,000 people. And so, you know, we're going to be doing a lot of stuff. And so I know that I'm not going to get a lot of sleep. So I prepared myself and to shut down early tonight to get as much rest as absolute possible um, to be able to prepare myself for all of that. Um, so I think that's going to be really fun. But so I know I've kind of strayed off the topic of, uh, you know, the reservation system itself. But, you know, that's just a little bit of it, too. But, no, it's just gotten so insane. So, uh, summertime is actually the slow season for bowling alleys. And a lot of people think that's a little weird. But during the really nice days, people are at the beach, cookouts, you know, things like that. And, uh, but, no, this actually that I've been talking to previous owners and whatnot. This is 
um, the busiest that this bowling alley has been in any summer in over 15 years. So typically, last summer was, uh, I mean, still with COVID going on and we didn't have a good tour season and all that stuff, we, uh, we had a really awful summer. Uh, went in debt and uh, it just was not good. This summer, um, I've been booking at least a day in advance. Rainy days book two to three days in advance. So um, last summer I could get in walk-ins, and this summer it's it's been really tricky too, especially with all the rain. Uh, you know, tourists have finally been coming through, so it's been it's been crazy for sure. So, um, but yeah, so it's been insane pretty much is, is what I'm saying, but it's been a little tricky. So people coming in, they try to walk in. Today I had I think I turned away probably at least 30 groups that wanted to come in and bowl and some of them did fight me some of them pointed out the lanes you know that I had going I actually uh, purchased caution the like orange caution cones uh, that you see like traffic cones is what I'm trying to say yeah and uh, I got those to go down on each lane that's not working so that when people do come in and you know they're like oh you don't have all your lanes going what about that one I then will point out, because most of the time, I don't have time to explain my story to them. You know, I have, oh, lane two's down. That table needs clean before that group comes in. Um, you know, we've got the, the bathrooms out of toilet paper. Something's wrong in the arcade room. Like, there's just so much going on. So I don't have the time of my day to explain to each group that comes in why I operate the way I do and have them, you know, understand. And so usually I just point out and I go, you see all the cones? Those are the lanes that are not working. And then I kind of sometimes have to leave it at that. And, uh, you know, some of them, like I said, are really upset. Um, luckily with the articles, like the NP article that went out about me, that has helped so much. And uh, huge shout, shout out to Tressa. You know, she's the one that had submitted the story, you know, for the NPR article and is the one that really did it. And uh, with the NPR article going out, that really opened a lot of people's eyes of, you know, understanding that, hey, it's just her in there. Like, you know, got to take it easy. So it's been interesting. <laughs> I love the place, but that is probably my biggest struggle is I just wish everyone understood, you know, what actually goes on here the struggles of doing it and, you know, that I, I just, I really do wish that people would understand that I would really love for them to be able to bowl. I never would like to tell a group no, that they can't bowl if I have a lane available. Like candle pin, you know, is the main reason I'm here to save the sport, to, you know, spread the word of it. And I don't know how I'm supposed to spread the word if, you know, if I'm turning away groups, if I have lanes open. So I want I want everyone to know I'm not going to say no to you if I do have a lane open. And uh, sometimes, like I said about the backup lane, most of the time groups will come in. And if I, you know, that backup lane, I end up telling them, I go, yep, so I have a backup lane. But you have to understand if one of my reservations, their lane goes down, this is their backup lane. And most groups will understand. But then if the backup lane goes down, you know, that's a whole another situation so it's it's tricky and uh, I just like to share you know what's going on and why I do operate that way and like I said it's a, a bunch of reasons why I do the reservation system it's not just one but it has been so helpful um, keeps me very organized and I also am able to be creative with it so every group that comes in um, as you could see me you know cleaning up the tables Every lane has a table. So I have 12 lanes, I have 12 tables. So every group gets their own table. They come in. Um, I like to be creative and put a personal touch to it. So when they come in, I will literally draw art on a little chalkboard sign, draw some art around it, um, usually according to their area code. So if it's 207, usually like pine trees or something like that. And I will uh, write their name and uh, the time of the reservation on that chalkboard and I just try to give that you know touch with it so they kind of just something to be added on to it um, and then with the table you know if they go to the bar side to order food or drinks they can just go hey I'm on lane three and they'll bring it right out to table three for them and so they have their own you know spot for it so having that is really nice and you know helping with the organization as well but so but well 
kind of walking around and feel a little useless right now because I have to vacuum. I don't know if the microphone will do good with vacuuming. So I think I'm going to end the video here. And uh, but yeah, I will make sure to do a lot more videos now that I have this useful microphone. And thanks, guys, for listening.